November of 1918, the war over, the armistice signed, the defeated armies of Imperial Germany come streaming back to their homeland, from France, from Belgium, from Luxembourg. Of 11 million men mobilized by Germany, 7 million are casualties. Nearly 2 million are dead. Those who have survived return to heroes' welcomes. The German public has not yet seen an enemy soldier, has not yet felt the weight of defeat. Now the Allies begin to claim the spoils. For France, that emotionally charged, lost province, Alsace-Lorraine annexed by Germany in the War of 1870. Returning to taste the triumph are French President Poincaré and Premier Clemenceau. At Metz, French once more, crowds quickly topple the statue of Kaiser Wilhelm. Beyond Alsace, the Allies cross the frontier into Germany. Three armies of occupation, French, British, American, holding 5% of German territory as hostage to the world's security. Germany has signed an armistice. Now she must sign a peace treaty with the victorious powers. December 4, 1918, President Woodrow Wilson, 63, clad in one historian's phrase, in the armor of righteousness, sails for Europe on the liner George Washington for the peace conference which holds Germany's future in its hands. Germany's, Europe's, the world's. Woodrow Wilson arrives in France on December 13, 1918. The first president to go to Europe while in office. And Herbert Hoover observed, no such Evangeline of peace had appeared since Christ preached the Sermon on the Mount. spends Christmas with the 77th Division at Pershing's headquarters at Chaumont. Washington has cabled him that news coverage in America is thin. He should spend more time with the troops. But he is absorbed with the peace negotiations which lie ahead. He has been a good president, Pershing says, but he has his hands full now. On December 26th, Wilson crosses the channel to England. He has been criticized for inviting no members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, no prominent Republican, to accompany him to Europe. I tell you frankly, he has said, I am somewhat stubborn. His welcome in England is remarkably warm, although George V is irritated because he arrives on a bank holiday and others find his peace proposals too lofty. On January 2nd, 1919, King Victor Emmanuel greets Wilson in Italy. The reception is tumultuous. The Italians, with territorial ambitions and allied promises, are ardently wooing the president and think they have him won. Wilson believes the crowds are appealing to him over the heads of their leaders to make a just and enlightened peace, his 
open covenants openly arrived at. The president returns to Paris on January 7th. In less than two weeks, the Conference on Peace with Germany will begin. And with it, the ordeal of Woodrow Wilson. In defeated Germany, Allied forces have taken up positions along the Rhine, the sliver of the country that will be occupied under the terms of the armistice. The French, bent on revenge, make their occupation severe, using twice as many men as the Americans, many of them Negro colonials, whom they know the Germans will resent. One French commander orders the old-fashioned bright red trousers for his troops, explaining, the color infuriates the Germans. British occupation, headquarters at Cologne, is more relaxed. A British soldier notes the Germans were eager to show us courtesy and submission. Submission to at sea. The German high sea fleet has sailed into surrender at British naval bases. Under the armistice terms, ten battleships, six battle cruisers, eight light cruisers, 50 destroyers, and all 129 submarines. Six months later, in June 1919, the Germans will scuttle much of this fleet at Scapa Flow under the eyes of the British in defiance of the peace terms at Versailles. The dismantling of the German war machine proceeds. Everything from airplanes to zeppelins is taken over. The immediate threat of German militarism is eliminated. <laughs> 